This conference will now be recorded. I will see my screen and my audible clearly. Yes, sir, but a little bit blurry today. What kind of blurry? Now it's okay? Yeah, let, better, sir. Thanks. Okay, so I think we are discussing about uh, hmm. we discuss about the tooltip. Hmm. How we can represent a tooltip on the top of a chart. Discuss about the page navigation. If somebody wants to move it to another page, whether it's a button or the image. Did you guys practice this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's discuss about two things. Drill through. Okay. What is mean by drill through is that? So suppose uh, for this uh, category, right? what is the which customer bought this or what is the order number placed for this product or which date it got order order date what is the due date for this order all this information right suppose somebody wants to see let's take an example okay in this page it is quite impossible to put that all the detail information right because this is more of a summary information or a basic information, right? So the detailed information is not available here, right? So what we can do in, in that kind of scenario, just like a tooltip is the undemand page, we can create another page and that we can uh, drill through from the sense whatever, suppose you click on the protein or any, any other subcategories, right? So just click on that then it will navigate to that particular report itself okay and based on that the that report will be filtered based on the selection what you are selecting from this piece okay so that is called the drill through let's get into the practical so that you can understand that okay so let's create a page first okay i'm giving as rename as drill through and just little bit formatting i'm doing i'm just doing the canvas background here slightly inside 100 percent transparency so that i'll get something new all right and i'm taking one table because anyway this is a pure table information will be okay all right so here so let's take uh I'm taking something like category name, my subcategory name, product name, product size, whatever you want, you can take it. Okay? There is no compulsion that you need to take this only customer. Okay, and from the sales, let's take I take a due date, order date. Okay, and finally, I'm taking my sales order number. Then let's take up from the customer. I took my okay, that's fine. Let's let's do that. Now this is this is the report we have done. Now for this this report, I want to click when I'm clicking on the protein, right? I want to go to this report and what about the category name is there now? That I need to filter based on the protein so that I will get. For that particular category name, I will get other information on this particular report. Okay, working sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So, once you've done that, now just click on the protein now. Okay, just click. 
single click on the Okay, so if you right click on this now, no. Uh, why is there is no coming? It's still true for me. Uh, I have a RCS by category name. I have also here the category name. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now to make it this happen, right? So if you right click on this, there's a drill down is coming, but there is no drill through. Drill down means what do you mean by drill down? More detail. Yeah, I mean in the sense category to subcategory. That is a drill down, right? We have two levels of data. Okay. But drill through is different. Drill through is something like this report you created. Now on the visualizations, right? If you select this visualization on the death page, there is an mm. option called drill through. Without below. Mm. And you can add the field through which we want to make the drill through let's let's try to understand okay so suppose i have kept here only the category name just for a sec okay so what will happen once you put this one automatically there will be a back button will be created because from where you came you need to go back okay so now on the sales now let's go to the sales and this is my category right so I just try uh, just click on this automatically one drill down will come and another drill through will come okay mm -hmm. this drill through will show you the one report that is my report which I created okay just click on the drill through now and you see the category name is already filtered to protein only that's only nothing else it is not filtering other category it is just filtering the protein and based on that we will get other information like what are the orders and all. This is called a drill through. Okay. How I done it? Just listen to this. So I just created an on demand page. Okay. I put it my all the columns, whichever is required. Okay. Then finally, through which column I want to drill through, that I put it here. In this case, I just kept it a category name. Okay. So now when this happened when I go to this report where this category name is being used right when I just click on this the uh, let's say caps okay now click on the caps I can do yeah this is a little bit tricky okay that's why I don't like this feature I will show you another way to drill through but yeah, let's click and just wait for this slowly. Yeah. So drill through. Now click on the drill through. Okay. So this same category, whatever you selected, that will get filled. Okay. Now the one question I want to ask you here in this case is that now I drill down to the category. Let's take to the subcategory now. Okay. Sorry, not like this. So this is my subcategory now. Correct the same report on the subcategory. Now if you just select on this, I am not I am I am not getting any drill through here. I am just getting the drill up because it can go to the category. But why I am not getting any option on the drill through? Can somebody tell by seeing the bed page? Sorry. Drill through is set for category name, so correct. That's correct. So whichever column you put, based on those columns only, you can just drill through from the parent table. Okay. So if you put now your subcategory name also here, then only we will able to do it. Okay. That's correct. Now you will get it correct. Now we are getting this. If you see, only the, that subcategory is getting filled. Okay, 
so based on that only whichever column you kept it here and that column being used any of any of the report okay suppose right now this is based on the net sales by region but when you click on any particular region you will not get a drill through because the region is not being used as a drill through in the report okay making sense mm -hmm. this is yes okay now suppose you put it the customer region now let's do that so select it and let's put the customer so and and one more thing the the column which are being used in the report only that column you need to put in the drill through is not the is not the case okay. you can put any columns if you want okay so my region is not being used in the table but i am using it okay so what will happen now now you go put this report now on this report now you will get it all through because that column is being with a drill through there okay simple yes okay. okay now but why i don't like this picture is this one if you put it in this way we need to train your customer okay in the sense this is quite little bit tricky suppose uh, few people they don't know because if you click on this only then the drill through will come okay suppose you want to select this then sometimes the pop-up will come you need to wait for some time then only it will come up right and this feature to going through like this we need to train each and every member who are using this dashboard and this is somehow a bit tricky to give it to the customer okay because they don't know sometimes like and let's try to understand suppose you want to say that i want to click it then i will get a drill through then i want to navigate to this i can forget also sometimes okay i can come to the question that where is my i'm not able to drill down or drill through right so we should be simplify the process uh, to the customer okay so how how we can simplify this process let's do that okay so what i will do in this case is that let's little bit give some space here in between slightly and i will insert a button here okay. instead of all these things i will go to a button and i will go for a blank button here okay I'll put it here somewhere. Okay. So now just select this button and go to the style. There are different state are available. Okay. One is default state, one is on hover, on pace, disabled. So there are different states are available, and for the each state of the button. You can do your customization okay so what i will do first now is that i will click on the disabled state because when the button is disabled what i want to do it okay first select the disabled state here text on okay i will put say select a, just i'm giving a rough message here okay Font color, let's go for a white color. Something like that. Okay. Blue, bold also you can do it. And I want to keep the background also. So that background will be coming from the fill color. Okay. Fill. I will give one color called. Now let's check the blue. Okay. Okay, now we need to give the action now. Okay, click on the action. Now this time the action would be we just do the page navigation. You remember last class, right? I'll discuss mm -hmm. about other other navigation, but this time it will be a drill through because there is a, another action type. It will be the drill through. Click on the drill through, 
and destination would be my page which I created drill through page okay fine this is for the which state I did it for the disabled state okay now this is the first I have done it okay now let's try to understand and if you click on certain things here it will not go because this button is right now if you control and click this button is disabled okay so it will not go unless until you select something from this this button will be deactivated then only it will allow you to go to the drill through page right now it is asking that please select the category from this report okay now let's select this something okay let's select now this button is activated now okay this button is active. just change it if you check it out just remove it this button is moving to the original this is called the disabled state okay now if we click on this this one sorry if we click on the any any kind of protein i've selected now this button is got enabled or it's got uh, enabled not disabled now select this now go to the style and for the disabled we have done so many things right it's like that i want to go to the default state for the button and i will do something okay so i will say a different text i will say drill through to orders something like this T H R O Okay, drill through to the orders. Okay, and uh, let's select something white only, little bit blue. So this one, and same uh, features I will put it. Okay, fill little bit on the blue side. The uh, action, action is there for me. Drill through. Okay, so now let's try to understand now. So now I, if I'm not selecting anything, it is select is asking that select a category and it is not getting the meter drill through. Okay. Now if I select something from the protein or any any such category from here, then it is saying that drill through to the orders. Now if we click on this, it will go to the particular page and that category name will be properly filtered. Okay making sense this is this is i think it's a more convenient way to the customer because why because there is a button there in the below and the customer eyes will go there and see that okay what is this let's try but instead of doing this like the drill through it is quite impossible sometimes it is they will skip it okay yes. got it this point yeah, but okay. um, like uh, on button uh, you said till through uh, mm. till through the page till through the orders so mm. it is just the text mm. it's just the text but how it's going to the order page what we're is selecting the, the action we are doing the actions right action type is drill through and we are going to the drill through page here oh, destination okay. Okay. and this page also just like your tooltip this page mm -hmm. also needs to be hide because this is online so i don't want my customer to come directly to this report never mm -hmm. okay. it should be go from the sales, sales page only so i will always i will put it in the hide page this way. okay all right now your question is in this case is so i'm selecting a protein or anything carbs clothing vitamins or amino acids now what is happening is let's see the carbs my this text is always a static text it is saying the drill through to the orders okay this is the text whatever i'm kept it there in this button it is quite static mm -hmm. now my requirement is what about this category i'm selecting from here that text should come it is saying it will say that drill through to the carbs order or if i select protein it should say drill through to protein orders 
as if I select something like clothing, it should say me drill through to the clothing orders. Okay, and if I'm not selecting anything, it should say drill through to the all orders. How we will do it? What is the use of uh, hiding the page? Okay, hiding the page in the sense, just think one. So when you are a customer, in this in this Power BI desktop, as a developer, you will be able to see all the things. Okay, but okay. when you publish this content to the customer, I'll show you in the Power BI service. This page should not be shown to the customer. Why? Because if this page is shown to the customer, they will go directly to, to, to this page, right? And see the information. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I want from this page only, I want them to navigate. And when they click on the back button from here, automatically that page again will be hide. So there will be two pages only for me. One is the sales and this page only. That's it. That is for the customer. These are on-demand page. So when you click on this, this tooltip also, do you think that this tooltip page, they will go directly and just check it out what exactly happened? They will get confused, right? Mm, yeah. So whenever you are creating this kind of pages, those are called the on-demand pages. So on-demand pages always will be the in the hidden street. It will be there, but it will not showcase to the customer. Oh, okay. Okay. Now the next requirement which I told, that question is clear. <coughs> so if we click on protein, it should show select name, drill through to the protein. Drill through to the protein mm -hmm. orders. If I click mm -hmm. on the carbs, it will show me drill through to the carbs order. If I'm not selecting anything, anyway it is selecting a selecting category which is asking right how mm -hmm. also so it means it's capturing how should it capture the like category what we are selecting correct so and one uh, is there any option in the visual format thing or it's with the coding? You just think how to manage it, where the option is different. If I ask you this question, you need to give me the options. Okay, where to use, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe like, uh, yeah, when we click on this protein, uh, it should mm -hmm. display that, I mean, like the, the action, we need to create this as an action, I think, the protein. My, uh, before, before jumping into anything, the first mm -hmm. question will be, whatever I'm selecting, how I'll capture that? Mm -hmm. That is the only question. If that answer is clear, other thing will come into place. what i'm selecting i'm selecting protein that mm -hmm. value how i will capture or where i will capture variable uh, I mean, like actions okay can you go to the action how i'll capture here in actions do you have any property to capture it this is just a type of action and which destination you are going there that's it it is going right like a state, maybe state. Which state? I mean, uh, style. 
no no state uh, in the state um, Usually, the value will be stored in the variable whenever we play, perform some action. Uh, the particular related uh, response will be stored in that variable, right? Which variable? Sorry, I mean, not asking. Like usual, usual. I mean, general thing. I'm talking. Uh, general in the sense, like which environment? Like you are clicking on something. How? A variable will capture that unless until you are not declared. Yeah. Usually, we, usually we capture actions on click, right? On on click, do do this action. Go to correct. page. We are doing a correct. We are doing a on click action. Now. I understand. So that action I need to capture it. The value which was is there on the on click that I want to capture it. Where I will capture. It's a very simple thing only. Um, very simple. On page. And all your your focus is more upon the formatting. In a formatting, this is just to enhancement your the tools or the buttons which you are using or the graphs you are using like the charts you are using how the format option will capture the action well this, this is a very simple thing like this formatting options are coming for just to enhance the features how this will capture a action here how we will capture it I'm, I'm not getting that point exactly the logic is not fitting me Maybe like How we need to, do we need to create a measure for that? Mm. Obviously, we need to create a measure. It's yes. same kind of that thing, like we were selecting uh, one slicer and then whatever we select in the slicer, Correct. it's capturing and it was showing in the car. Correct. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So let's select. create a measure. So let's create a measure. I am giving this as a let's take the button title. Okay. First of all, I want to capture whatever the category I have selected. So, which function I will use in this case? Which tax function? Has selected. Has selected. Is there any function called has selected? I think something kind of selected. Like we are selecting this category name. Selected with you. That's it. So this is whatever you selected that will be captured. Now on this we want to put some text right before to that after to this. Okay. So I will say this is a text and I'm just preparing myself. Okay. I'll say drill through. Okay, then I will concatenate with in space with concatenate. So this is the this is the text drill through to and this is a space and this part is whatever you selected. So drill through to protein or uh, drill, drill through to the cups or drill through to the whatever you selected from here. To mm -hmm. then I will give some space here again. And I will concatenate again. I will give some retro again. Mm -hmm orders so this is just like a title i'm creating okay this part is important now. yeah otherwise it's, it's simple enter now the point is this measure how we can incorporate into the button that you can do with the format okay mm -hmm. so now if i select something this i want to change it okay 
So I'll just select the button, go to style, and the text. Now, if you see, this is a static text. Okay. But near to the type text, there is a FX button is available. This will uh, make the title dynamic. Okay. So just click on the FX here and select the measure which you created. The button title. That's it. Now, if you see, the changes will be done. Now, if you not select it, select a category. If I select the protein, it is saying the drill through to the protein orders. Right? If I click on the carbs, it is saying the drill through to the carbs order. Drill through to the, sorry. Mm -hmm. Drill through to the clothing orders. Make sense? This is? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now one more task I'm asking you. Just concentrate on this same thing. So this this is any questions on the drill through? We're good. Hmm. Yes, sir. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now next question would be. So let's take this is a ch this is the area chart, right? Which is showing that less sales by year and month, right? So in this case, year is I have only one year. So I don't want to consider the name, but what about the month I am selecting here? Let, let's say I'm selecting January okay, from this. So I want to see the title would be net sales by uh, for, for let's say for uh, let's take year and January month. So whatever I'm selecting or net sales by January month, whatever I'm selecting from here. If I selecting February, it should give me Red sales by February. Okay, so that same features yeah. I want to implement here. How I'll do it? Okay. So again, we'll create same measure. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You can just click on this and take it as a reference only. Mm -hmm. Just select this. Okay. Only thing is. Let's little see, bit so here, yeah. Here and there, there will be some changes. So mm -hmm. let's chart it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here I want to say instead of this, I will say net sales okay. by year. Okay, uh, for for okay. giving a space. And this is the month selected value. I should select By month. month. Yeah. Okay, instead of that, I also select the month name. That's it. Hmm? Hmm. Yeah, change it. Now this is done. Now this title or this measure needs to be incorporated inside the title of this chart. So select the visualization. Hmm. Go to the hmm. format Ta and hmm. the title. Title is available on generals. Okay. Hmm. In the general, hmm. click on the title, and always this title will be static. Hmm. So to make it dynamic, you have to click on the FX button. Okay. FX and select the visualization. Oh, so select the measure which you created. Chart title. Hmm. Then, now I am not selecting anything right now. It is saying the net sales by year for all. So it should give me at least all, right? Where I will incorporate that? If I select something, it will come up. So right now it is all selection actually. So it was not coming. So if I select January, it will come up. Net sales by year for January. But if I am not selecting anything or select all, where I should incorporate that? Just think once. I'm in the measure. At last, we oh, well. correct. So, here I need to calculate to the string. We we'll say all. all. That's it. So, this is the default parameter. So, if selected value is always take one parameter, one value, right? Remember this function? Mm -hmm. It will consider only one value. 
which is not set multiple values okay so now it will show you the net sales for year for all okay because it is for all years or all you months whatever you can put there if we select two then still it will yeah. show all if we select just january and february and um, that is the exercise you, you guys need to do let me do that first one single one so let's okay. click on the january it is giving me net sales for the january mm. if i select for the fab it is giving me net sales for the february okay and if i am selecting all it is giving me net sales for the all fine now the problem is if i select the multiple months jan and feb it will still give you the net sales for the year all that is wrong okay because i have a multiple i am not selecting all here i am selecting only the january and february it should give me at least net sales by year for jan and feb or jan comma feb what for me right mm -hmm. okay how how what do you think how to fix this again in the mesh See, put your thoughts here because these are the problems you only face in real time. Okay, just try to understand. And put your thoughts here. Maybe we need to include filter uh, option here. Filter uh, what function. Fil what filter we will put it? How to put it? So um. can we use this function two types with and operator sorry which one selected value uh, can mm -hmm. dates and with and operator can we use it one more time which and operator this and operator and yes uh, this is concatenation operator this is not the and operator right and means uh, and operator sir maybe with the double this one ampers. Huh. Okay. Then what I will put it there? Again, selected value, dates, and month name. The same function. But just think. And hmm. operator is a what kind of operator? Logical operator. It will check both the condition. If it is true, it will execute. But here, that is not the point, right? It is like ten is ten is hmm. greater than twenty, and ten is greater than thirty. With the end operator, then both are true. We are comparing these two. That time mm -hmm. the end operator will work, right? End on or. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Do we need to use if condition? Okay. How will we use value? Just think. Let me know the logic. Oh. With the selected value is less than mm -hmm. the count of. Uh, How will it get it then? Because selected, just think, selected value is returning a string One. number. It is, it is not mm -hmm. a number. It is a string. How you can put greater than ten for that? It's not month number actually. It is month name. January, February. A January is greater than ten means there is no logic, right? It could be ten greater than twenty, but January is greater than ten means wrong result, right? yeah there might be function which uh, which capture more values Now, my question is so the question mm -hmm. is very simple before jumping into the solution first question is why is not able to capture two months yet can somebody answer that question because selected value um it will give you only one value okay. it will not give you it will compare only one value not it will mm -hmm. not give you one value it will compare one value mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. on this column it will always compare only select single value only and if it is more than one value here mm -hmm. then it is false this part it will go to the this part only the alternate one that's yeah. why whenever you are selecting multiple months it is going to the all part okay 
that is what happening so how we will capture the first point is whenever i am capturing something two three values i want to combine it combine it with a comma with a pipe or for something like that i want to do it how we will do it this one i can't use this function impossible because it's, if it's a single selection i'm okay with this but if it's a multiple selection it is impossible to do that okay so for that after this i will use a function called concatenate x i think we we'll discuss everything yeah okay so now on the concatenate x what you want to compare with first parameter mm -hmm. is a table so mm -hmm. we want to compare the month name right month name we want to do it i will create a table for the values of month name first okay mm. then the expression also it should be the month name only because i want to combine that value itself with a delimiter of comma that's it this part needs to be done whenever you have a multiple values i will commit to this formula but there is another problem we will face here in this case that i wa i want you guys to fix it okay let's let's enter it i'll show you that problem see now it is coming right net says for january comma february if i select multiples right if i select one more also march it will come net says for jan for year for january comma february comma march right getting it now the problem here is in this case is the all selection if i select all now this chart will be very messy it will give you all the months okay jan feb mm -hmm. march april may june july over september it is combined everything now your fixed part is whenever i am selecting the all here it should give me at least net sales by year for all rather oh. than just mm -hmm. giving the all the months name otherwise the solution will work when i am not selecting anything and i'll select some random uh, things also feb april and may okay so let's see that just see this and let me know any questions you have on this Okay. Okay. So the the other fix, please think once, not now. Once you start practicing that, just think that how we can fix that other issue in this case. Okay. When I'm selecting the all, this is the problem I'm facing. I should get at least the net sales by year something like that. Okay. Okay, all means all 12 months. 
Yeah, instead of giving 12 months name, you should give me at least all right there. This is making not good. This title is not looking good. Okay. Okay. Got it? This point? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now let's exactly say this. Let's discuss about some formatting options we have in Power BI. Okay. So in this report, I don't think so any formatting is required, but I will show you in a different page. So you can come to know that what are the options you have and whenever you are required that you can use it. Okay. So let's create a page here and few things I will take it. Okay. So let's take a table here. And suppose I have Let's take by state by state. I need some more data. Net sales by let's take the net sales. Okay. Is it visible? No, yes, now it is okay. Mm. Now it is good. Now, what are the options I have? Suppose I have a data like this, and for the net sales, if you go to the formatting on the net sales side, whenever you are dragging it, you just click on this, there will be conditional formatting options will be there. Okay. How we are going to do it? Click on the net sales, this drop down. There is a conditional formatting, and there are different types of conditional formattings are available background color, font color, data bars, icon, web or anything. So let's start with first option is for the data bars. Let's click on the data bars and click on the net sales. Okay, net data bars. So here, if you click on the data bars, it is just giving me a minimum value and a maximum value. It's just counting overall. Okay, so it, by seeing the data, it is checking the lowest value and the highest value. But you can enter your value as well. Okay, how we can enter? Click on the custom. Now you can put the value. Like suppose you want to start the minimum value as ten thousand and the maximum value as twelve to four thousand or thirty four thousand, whatever may be the value. You can enter that. Or if you don't want to do that, just click on the lowest value only. Automatically, Power BI will take it up. Okay. On that one, you want to show some bar. So the positive bar and the negative bar. There are two bars are available. So click on the positive bar and just click some uh, random colors. Let's take any dark color I'm taking. And the negative color I'm taking a little bit on a more of a blue side. There is no negative right now on the net sales. So that will not come, but we will be able to get the information. Okay. Now, okay. It. So this will show like this. This is called your data bars. So whenever there is a negative on the net sales, right, there will be another color will come and it will just keep the bars here. This is called the formatting called the data bars. Okay. Making sense. Mm. So now, one thing you will always face is that just remember, okay, you suppose uh, given this uh, somebody, somebody created this report. And he done some formatting to the net sales and you are seeing that okay are you able to see that like this the formatting now the challenge here would be always in the real time is that what formatting he applies okay if somebody is given to the report we can't ask them right at that that you go there right because somebody can be senior to you so we can't ask them because you should know that what kind of formatting he applied so whenever you find some kind of formatting so so let's say in the net sales you are you are seeing some format just click this report go to the net sales okay and just click on this we will get one more option will be enabled that is called the remove conditional format and if you click on that the formatting which applies that will be activated in this case by seeing that you understand that okay here the formatting is applied for the data bars okay and just don't delete it from here. 
careful this just if you remove it but this is the indication that what formatting he applied on this report okay for that you need to go to the conditional formatting and click on that formatting part the data bars then you can able to see that what formatting he applied for this particular report or particular column okay making sense this is okay so there are a couple of options we have so first of all option is in top there is a so bar only so bar only something like uh, along with the bar we are seeing the values also right but instead of that if you don't want to see the uh, what do you call it, the value then it will if you click on this now it will show you only the bars instead of the values not making sense to me so next option would be conditional formatting the data bars unselect this and there is an option called the bar direction as well either from the left right now the default will be the from the left to right i can choose the right to left as well so it will go like this okay the bars will go from like this way okay first part is clear any questions yeah okay let's do another formatting let's drag Mm. let's drag the target sales okay on the target sales i want to do some formatting now i have done it the sales now click on the target sales conditional formatting this time i will go for the background color i will show you the background color the same applies for the front color also okay same thing there is nothing changes so click on the background color here so there are different types of background colors are available the styles one is with the gradient the rules and the fit value we'll discuss one by one the first let's go to the gradient color okay so gradient is something like the lowest value to maximum value in between the range of the colors we are giving it okay so let's see on the lowest value i'm just putting a color called this one and highest is this one i can put a middle color as well if you click on the middle color just like this so this is a range so it will start with this deep color slowly setting it to the blue uh, sorry yellow again it will go to the green then finally slowly it will end as at the blue with a range of values whatever you have in the in the target cells okay now if you click on the okay here it will do a background color for this this is data bar this is called the background colors okay okay now incorporate the total here also let's click on this and go to the format and click on the totals okay total is coming but there is a text color is white okay so let me change it to black yeah, now I am getting the total as well. Now just see that here, the formatting which you applied, the background colors, it is not applicable to the totals right now. It is not applied. Okay? Mm -hmm. But there is an option and that option is there to incorporate the formatting to the total as well. That is your choice, whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it. That is also to the customer which you are uh, reporting to also, whether they required or not required. Okay. If they required, let's go to target sales, click on the conditional formatting, click on the background colors. There's an option here in this one. That applies to values. Right now it is only applied to values. Okay. But I have the option called values and totals. So if I select that, this formatting, now the only problem is in this case is that this just imagine that okay. If you are selecting the values only automatically it is taking the lowest value the middle value and the highest value automatically power base taking up but when i am selecting the values and total i need to provide my minimum value my center value and my maximum value that i need to fix it so it will be this to this range i need to give it here in this case okay this is the only changes it will happen let's see that
simple okay so let's try to understand so that, that let's take minimum value i am putting as a 15000 this is let's take 30000 and somewhere around 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay now if i click on the okay now see my total also getting filled up now remember this this option got it so yes. when you select it then only the your total will be get formatted otherwise not so that this choice is for the customer okay whether they don't want it or they don't want it okay now let's go to the conditional formatting sir on the background but, color good uh -huh. uh, comparing to next page it's here sir in loss right can we show that difference also here for the net sales you want the totals uh, the data bars you are talking about this one uh, no, i don't have any, uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. uh, in the data bars i don't have that option to showcase the bar at the total level okay. i don't have an option okay. this is for the background color so. okay. background or even uh, for the font color also now the next part will be the this part i selected it the format color next gradient we just saw that instead of that we can put one rules also rules is very simple we can say the target sales is greater than this less than this which color greater than this less than this which color okay so something like that so let's take greater than i put it 10,000 and uh, let's take less than equals to 15,000 the color would be something like this okay and that's it just i want to put it one color only. or if you want to put another condition i can put like this new rule i can say greater than 15,000 and uh, less than anything anything beyond that what of the max I have on my model, I can just skip it this part also. So it will give you the max. What about the maximum target sales I have in my model? So that color I just want to put it as a little bit lighter color. Okay. Now if you put this okay here, so based on certain selections, you will get it. This is called the rules. Okay. Why these two colors are not coming? Because I have a condition not proper. Okay. It is I am selecting greater than 10,000 first condition it is less than 10,000 so that's why the colors are not coming for this two making sense this is yes okay so this is called the rules so you saw that how you can see the gradient color rules not the field value field value whenever there is a field value is coming now that is referring to a major okay always a measure so through measures and that is really helpful i'll show you how that is really helpful in the same thing i will create a measure now okay i will say the target sales color something like that i will create a measure here and i can put the condition here okay so i will say if my target sales say uh, less than equals to let's take 15,000 okay or I can I think we need to better to do the switch one because I need to give the multiple statement here. so let's do the switch I will say true the target sales is less than 15,000 then I want to give some color so we can give the name directly in this case okay the name of the color you can give so let's take blue okay come oh, red what happened to this blue? okay came now suppose uh, i will say the target sales greater than 15000 
and target sales less than equals to 30,000. So it went out to 13,000. Okay. So I want to give a color called let's take anything red. Comma. Else it will be another color called like a tomato color is here. Okay. Just like a red little bit red. So you can have any color combination here. And this is really helpful. Apart from the rules, the gradient color, no, this is I think is the best way to do it. So you can have a control over your color and the condition. You can have any condition here. Let's try to use it. Let's enter this. Okay. Now once my measure is ready, I'll go to the target sales, conditional formatting, my background colors. Now instead of the gradient and rules, I select the field value. And I will select the the measure which I created. What is the measure name I have given? Target sales by color. That's it. Okay. Automatically all the colors will be auto applied. Okay. Make sense? These are tomato colors, okay? This little bit orange style, no? These are tomato, this is red. So this is quite helpful in this case, okay? So we have a more control and you can have any conditions here in this case. Any condition, any such condition you can put it and that you can use it as a color formatting for any of the background colors. Okay? Okay, sir. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. So another formatting, suppose, let's click on the state. Okay, let's click on the state. Put the conditional formatting, click on the icons. Okay, let's click on the icons. This I will show you. There also, there is a rules and the field value will be there. Let's start with the rules. Okay, first of all, let's rules. And uh, let me delete some. I don't want much in this sense. So let's take the state contains uh, something like what else m okay wherever there is a state name content m i want to keep an icon here okay something like uh, anything i can take it oh, fine this is fine and suppose anything contain p and i want to give this icon just icon okay so put a okay here We'll get some icon on top of uh, before to the states. So wherever there's an M, there's an icon. There is a P, there is an icon. Okay. This will be helpful to give you KPIs up and down all these things. Okay. But I will show you another very beautiful way to keep the icons is through the measures again. Okay. Let's do that. So let's drag my the gross sales, where is my gross sales? Let's try the gross sales here. And based on that, I want to give a icon for this, for the gross sales. Let's see that. So, let's say gross sales icon. I just quit it. So, I will say switch. I will say true. I will compare, okay? Gross sales. If it is less than 10,000, it's a very bad sales, right, for me, okay? So what I'll do, I will put a double quote and I can insert some emojis also here in this case, okay? How to insert the emojis? And the Windows button is there on your laptop, the Windows button. Mm. Everybody have yes. the Windows button? I don't know about the Mac. Windows button is there, that Windows yes. button and dot, and the dot. And if you put it there, then all the emojis will come up. Hand symbol, all these things. Okay. That you can insert also. So, let's go for a crying face in this case because my sales is very low, right? So, crying face, then I'll say bad sales. Okay. 
some something like this. Okay, something like this. So now I will compare my cross sales is let's say greater than equals to ten thousand and my cross sales is less than equals to or less than or let's take uh, thirty five thousand. So I will say this is again I will put Windows and out uh, normal something like this average sales. So you can put any condition here. and lastly I want to put very good. Okay, just put a double quote here. I think that <coughs> excellent. Okay, something like that. I can also create something in this case. Okay. Now enter it. Now go to the gross sales your conditional formatting. Now click on the icons. Click on the field value and select your the gross sales icon. This one. I think on my system there are some uh, formatting problem is there. This will not come up. There is some images will come something like that. I don't know why this is happening, but in your case it will come up. Okay, no worries. I already checked with the evening guys as well. They are getting it everything. So and maybe some problem on my system only. So this will be not previewed for me. Okay, properly. Okay, so this we can like that we can also you can do it. You can try it out this I hopefully the icons will come there for your images If you want to put it, you can just put it and check it out. It will come hundred percent. No worries. If you want to add later, also is fine, but it will come. No worries on that. Okay, sir, we'll check it. Yeah, sure, you can check it out. Okay, I think uh, this yeah. these are the formatting options I have. If if you want, you can use it into this report. Okay. Now the task is I have created this page completely with all the things. This page, the YOY page. Okay. So that we need to think that what are the things we need to put it. Just like how I created the sales page, right? It is just like a comparison of the year over year comparison. Right? We need to think of that. What are the uh, visualization I want to put it here in this case? What are the formatting I want to put? Just you need to think of on this page. Okay. That that your job to complete this page if you want to. And uh, tomorrow I will uh, review the Power BI in the sense if any topic specific topic you want to discuss with me. Or I'll just one minute or two minute. I will summarize what are the things I discuss and small small thing which ever left in the power bay. I want to and I'm uh, saying it to to this page particularly. When you practicing something new, 
which you don't discuss in this uh, because I know what are the things I left okay that is intentional I'm saying okay not like uh, demoralize you guys but you need some more practice so that you can get into some uh, the difficult scenarios okay or difficult concepts of the power be that I literally skip it for a intention okay and I'm not uh, like demoralize you guys but that topic I discussed in the evening batch but not this since topic there is some intention behind that okay but I'm very frankly I will share that recording to you two guys for the evening batches whichever I don't discuss in this morning and if you are after that also if you practice on that and if you get some uh, any doubts or still you want to discuss it in between also I'm open to that or any such new topics you came across on the power BI that you want to discuss more on that and you are good with the practice whatever you left I'm open to that I will discuss that okay I'm very clear on this okay don't take it wrong at why I skipped it but that's just things because I'm thinking like if you are getting more complex you guys are losing the interest somehow okay so that make it simple that makes it simple okay got the point right what I'm trying to say yes sir. okay so don't take it bad and you guys can rock in the sense just try practicing whatever the things you have on your plate with the sequels and all and after that also still you if you still think that whatever we discussed in this class still i have a doubt that also i can discuss and suppose any new topics you came across in power bay that i don't know that also i can discuss okay that is fine of you yes, is sir. that fine for everybody yes yeah sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, you got my point, right? What I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And tomorrow will be the last class for the Power Bay. Few things I will discuss. And if you have any questions from the first class, please note it down. And tomorrow ask me. It's not like tomorrow when you need to ask, but you can ask tomorrow some questions. And I will summarize like what are the things we covered up in the last one month for the Power Bay. We'll discuss it. And from the day after tomorrow classes, I will start the Python for you. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? What and I will I share mean? some. Sorry, come hmm. again. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is that? yeah um, like uh, i'm uh, i have some question on power automate like uh, is that i mean are you going to cover like uh, power automate no. topics no power automate we are not covering right yeah if you have a doubt you can ask me it's not like that i can cover up no no i mean like uh, the topics i'm going to i mean are you going to cover the topics or not i just want to confirm no no power automate is not part of this like the power platform we are not discussing here that will be extra over oh, don't you are, you are working on the power platform right now no 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 well, some of my friends are uh, right now in the market and they said mm -hmm. like um they are getting some questions on uh, power automate as well like uh, yeah okay Okay. That's the reason I'm checking. Okay. That was not the initial plan because that's I discussed when I class started the class, but they are not interested on the power platform. So instead of that, it is converted into Python and the Azure Data Factory. So that's the plan. There is no plan for the power platform right now. Okay. okay fine right now sir you are giving the scenario and uh, like scenarios and everything questions but mm. we are not like how do we think those and we can revise those now if we are at power bi so it's kind of mixing power bi and sql functions and mm. everything is we are mixed up mm. Mm. how can we like itself revising thing what should we do? Mm. 
do you have a choice not choice. to do in the sense how the question is answer is on your question only you're saying that how i can revise it right the answer mm -hmm. you need to find out because the questions which i have given you you need to more practice okay do the practice same one daily you you remember like suppose you are writing a measure can you do it next time on your own without looking back when that time happen you are done and your logic will be something like okay i am thinking of a logic let's take in this case i'm i'm saying that this is the logic i want to put it if you think mm -hmm. that okay if this scenario comes up i will use this function if when this comes up into your mind then that is the end of your power bi in the sense you can think that okay i at least i something i know about the power bi till that time you need to practice 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 the same thing okay okay sir yeah got it yes sir and ha uh, huh. go ahead sorry yeah yeah that is clear sir okay and uh, let me stop it and i'll tell you very good thing let me not i don't want to say in the recorded line